from membership of the so-called Big Five in the 80s to places in the current bottom five. These two wounded giants find themselves in the sort of pickle that the Everton chairman, Peter Johnson, used to put in the hampers from which he made his fortune. He's accused by Evertonians of failing to provide enough financial support for Howard Kendall. In the summer, their targets were the likes of Ince, Ravinelli and Les Ferdinand, who always seems to score here. However, he ended up at Tottenham. And instead, there are Goodison debuts today for Mitch Ward and for Carl Tyler, coaxed away from Sheffield United, who've taken Graham Stewart in exchange. Neville Southall plays his 750th game for the club. His new understudy, Norwegian Thomas Mira, is on the bench. And their only current England international, Andy Hinchcliffe, is left out in favour of Terry Phelan. Spurs' new head coach, Christian Gross, has also made a significant omission from his first team sheet. Darren Anderton is only a substitute. David Ginola survives to partner Ferdinand. Ramon Vega used to play club football for Gross in Switzerland. Clive Wilson is included for the first time this season. Peter Jones is the man in charge of what may well be a fairly tense battle. With the confidence of both sides so fragile, the first goal becomes all the more significant. That's if we get a goal. I should also warn you that three of the last five meetings between the clubs have ended goalless, but Everton have an immediate chance to make an impact as Campbell concedes the corner. Barmby. Ferguson. Oh, and then he tripped over the line. It was Steve Carr's heel that diverted the ball goalwards. Back to Barmby. All sorts of chaos. And the shots from Gareth Farrelly. Well, it's just a rousing start that all Evertonians would have been praying for. Tottenham's defence was all over the place. And Steve Carr will never come closer to an own goal without actually scoring one. That wasn't the end of Tottenham's problems. Gareth Farrelly, what, a foot over the bar? Farrelly. Speed. Clive Wilson, who was in the way for Tottenham. Oh, and look at the space that Gary Speed has got. Favours his left foot. Well, Everton have definitely had the better of the opening quarter of an hour. The only slight worry for them is that there's nothing tangible to show for it. Ginola. Wilson. Ferdinand, now did he use an arm? Referee's blown his whistle. It's an Everton free kick. Ferdinand says it was armless. But suddenly, Gary Speed, a few seconds earlier, had so much space and time to set himself, the bounce was awkward for Walker, and he held it well. Nielsen. Ferdinand. Foxes through the centre. Now it's Sinton. Ginola calling for it ahead of him. Sinton might try one, though! A trademark of Andy Sinton, really, cutting in off the left flank and letting fly with his right. And on a significant number of occasions from that sort of distance, he has scored. Christian Gross, the new Tottenham head coach. They used to call them managers, and the last Spurs manager to begin his career against Everton was Bill Nicholson in 1958, and Tottenham won by ten goals to four. Duncan Ferguson powering his way through and then falling over Sol Campbell wonderful look of innocence on Duncan Ferguson's face it's rather like the Calcutta Cup match at Twickenham England against Scotland into touch. Carr. Ginola. Ferdinand. 
Shorts header falls to speed. On for Barmby. No one with him. He'll have to go it alone. It's still Nicky Barmby. Tries the wall. Oh, oh, unlucky. What a fine effort. Three inches lower, and he'd be enjoying a goal against one of his former employers. Didn't look up, just sensed that Walker was off his line. Deserved a goal. Short. Tyler's header. Barmby. Nice touch. Speed. Back to Barmby. Now is he passed over by Fox? Apparently not. Ginola. Ferdinand. Everton could be caught out here. And that was a rough house challenge by Slavin Bilic. The referee is reaching for his pocket. There's a look of resignation on the face of Slavin Bilic. Because... Having been sent off twice this season already, he's also, whilst facing a two-match ban for the second dismissal, on four bookings. And if and when referee Peter Jones brandishes the yellow card, that will add a further three matches. So Slaven Bilic is going to miss five games as a result, partially at least, of that challenge on Ferdinand. The new disciplinary system is taking its toll. Christmas will be a time of rest for Slaven Bilic. Here's the free kick taken to Ferdinand. And blocked very well by Bilic. Carr. Everton will let it run. So Campbell looks to be in a bit of discomfort. He's holding his shoulder. That may be the result of an earlier challenge with Ferguson. In fact, it wasn't so much a challenge as a rugby tackle. They have a ready-made replacement in John Scales. But Campbell has been central to the countering of Ferguson's aerial threat. So and also to countering the pace and trickery of Barmby. Barmby. Scales involved for the first time. Now the whistle brings to an end a half which Everton have had the better of. Nick Barmby clipped the top of the bar with the main highlight of what we've seen. Duncan Ferguson has been a problem throughout to Tottenham who've defended doggedly. But it's been fairly attritional stuff, as you'd expect of an occasion which involves two members of the Premiership's bottom four. This young man should know the way to goal here at Goodison. Four-year-old Daniel Dean Haslam had a very famous great-grandfather who once scored 60 times for the club in one season. He was, of course, Dixie Dean. But this is Daniel's first goal of his career. Both these struggling teams have lost their last four games, so there's going to be an improvement in form for one and possibly both of them. But which will it be if one is to take the advantage? Certainly on the first half evidence, you would back Everton, but that's offside against Barmby. Despite all his problems, Howard Kendall remains greatly committed to the task and very enthusiastic about his chances of lifting Everton from the mire. Speed. Speed! Did very well just to work the opportunity, although the angle was always against him. And in fact, I think Nielsen whacked the ball against speed. Well, that could fall nicely for Ginola. Craig Short put his head in, but Schindler's broken through, and no free kick.
Neville Southall urging Ginola to get up. Ferdinand. Ginola is still in an offside position on the far side, but he's not interfering with play. Ferdinand. Ginola's picked up interest again in what's going on around him. And here is Ginola. And that's the first save that Neville Southall has had to make. And it's taken the best part of an hour for him to be called into serious action. Short. Farrelly. Just a little bit of frustration coming down from the stands at Everton's lack of a cutting edge. Maybe Tottenham have got one. This is Ginola. Going all the way. Well, he threatened the net. But only from the outside. Speed. Vega. Calderwood. This is just about Tottenham's most dangerous spell of the entire game so far. But that's saying a great deal. Sinton, Ginola, Wilson. Tottenham new sense of growing in confidence. Bilic on the stretch. Sinton. Oh. Good job that Southall was alert. A ribald reception for Davi Ginola. He'll take the corner. Scales, Vega, how did he miss from there? Should it be Vega or should it just be vague? They failed to pick up Scales altogether and Vega will surely 98 times out of 100 he would score from there, wouldn't he? Is that the stroke of luck that Everton need? And Tottenham can ill afford. Speed. Just kept it in. Back to Mitch Ward. Four waiting for the cross. Ferguson. Tyler. Well, he's a big tall man and readjusting his position was difficult as the ball dropped. Everton would have wished that the loose ball would have dropped to someone a bit more dexterous, like Barmby. Oh, a clash between Tyler and Ferdinand as the ball dropped. Generous kick. Back from Ferdinand. Foot on the gas. There's no flag, and Tottenham have the lead. It's the man who used to play for Christian Gross at Grasshoppers in Zurich. Gross has gone for a familiar name around which to base part of his team, and Vega has repaid him handsomely. And there is comparative silence around Goodison now. Sinton's ball in, the flick on. Wrong-footed the defence, and there was Vega with a simple header, albeit a harder one than the one he missed from virtually beneath the crossbar a few minutes earlier. Sinton, Fox, Ferdinand, Ginola, Trying to outpace Mitch Ward, and he might succeed. It's Ginola, and it's 2 0. Everton split apart by just one man, and Christian Gross up off the bench in celebration at the feet of a man who he must have considered dropping for today's game.
There was a school of thought that Ginola was a luxury that Spurs couldn't afford in their current plight. This is the Frenchman's answer. Brilliant. Bilic. Speed. Oster. Ward. Everton needs something and quickly. There's Ferguson. Great save by Walker. The ideal first time ball. Really was a good stop. Here's the corner. And Williamson. Plenty of power, not enough direction. Unlike many others, Peter Johnson is staying to the bitter end. And a manager whose expression belies his feelings. It's not a good night to be an Evertonian, but for Christian Gross, victory at the first attempt in English football. The two chairmen shake hands. There is applause from Peter Johnson. But the attitude from the terraces towards him is somewhat different. There are tears from the more emotional and from the more volatile shouts and gestures. But generally and worryingly, there is silence from the Evertonians whilst those from North London celebrate their first away win since March. A fifth defeat in a row, though, for Everton. Arguably, they're at their lowest ebb of the 44 years that they've spent consecutively in the top flight. They are, in fact, rock bottom. And all they ask of the chairman is to put up or to sell up. Even though Peter Johnson has departed to the sanctuary of the boardroom deep in the bowels of the main stand at Goodison. There are questions and demonstrations in the stands. They ask where the money has gone and they shout for the chairman to show his face. Uh, what does it do to, to your heart for the club, if you like, when you hear demonstrations against the chairman? It's disappointing, really, because I know how much naturally, the chairman wants to to be successful with Everton Football Club, and he knows he's got a manager who wants the same. And um, what the, uh, the supporters have got to understand, really, I, I suppose, is that um, the players do also. What about the standard of the game? How did it compare with what you've been used to in the Swiss League? I think um, it was a very aggressive. Technically speaking, it could be better. And uh, it was clear with two teams that were very nervous at the start. And, uh, but in the second half, we did very well. What about for the new manager, the new head coach? I think it was it was a, a very big change for us, you know. He's uh, someone from the continent, so uh, it's uh, quite different. It's a you know different way of, of training, different way of feeling football, and uh, I think he's is uh, not bad. I don't want to say <laughs> continental people are brilliant and the English people uh, are not. I think uh, you know he, he he didn't came in in uh, Tottenham to change everything, you know. He keep Chris Hutton, who got all the ideas, he's, he got the, the, the spirit of Tottenham, so uh, they mix it up a little bit. They mix uh, continental ID and British ID, and I think it's a good mixture. And what happens now? Do the players report for training tomorrow? Yes, we have uh, tomorrow pro own program. Tomorrow morning at 10.30, we'll be at training. They are uh, Monday free.